This is a demo of the engine analyzer. And I'm going to start up the engine analyzer a little different than what you would, just because um, my desktop is a little distorted. But when you double click on the desktop icon, which is roughly the equivalent to what I did there by starting it from Windows Explorer, you're going to come up with a screen. This is assuming you're starting with the program um, when you first get it. And you can see here it says it's set to beginner user, which makes things a little easier, hides a little, some of the more advanced features from you. And you can turn this off at any time, should you want, just under preferences, like it says right here. So click on OK. And here's a little blurb saying something about be careful. If you can modify an engine based on this, make sure you don't over rev it or don't assume that your engine, just because it, the program says you can rev it to 8,000 RPM, the actual engine may not be able to rev it to 8,000 RPM if you don't build it right. So uh, the program always starts with some existing engine in there where you can see up here it's an 85 Mustang 5 liter. That happens to be one of the, the default we start with. But let's say, like most of you, you're going to want to build your engine. The program doesn't let you start with a clean sheet of paper. It always wants you to start with some engine because there's so many inputs, we don't want you guessing at a lot of things. We'd rather say pick an engine that's close to what you want to build and we'll go from there. So let's say we want to build a uh, a 428 Ford, for example, okay? If you click on Engine Library, we can open up either some saved engines that you've created, and you can see that's completely blank because you haven't done anything yet. Or if you click on Engine Library, you can open some examples that we have provided. And here you can see there's lots of stuff here. A uh, little trick over here, if you click on Show All Files, if you type in Ford, it's only going to show you Ford engines here. Well, what do you know? We got a 428 Ford Cobra Jet from 69. That might be a very good starting point for the 428 we're trying to build. So click on that. See a little preview over here. You can see it's 427 cubic inches based on the bore and stroke, a little bit less than 428. But here you got some comments that describe the engine. So let's say, yep, yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm going to open that says, do you want to save any of your changes to the previous file, that 85 5-liter Mustang? And they said, no, nothing there of interest to us right now. So here you can see we're back at the main screen, 69 Ford, 428. And you can see that we can look at the short block head specs, intake system, exhaust, cam valve train, and a supercharger, turbocharger if you want to put one on. And then what conditions we're going to run it at. That would be things like, and here's a little pop-up showing that, if you want a definition of something like RPMs, what does starting RPM mean and such, if you click on it, a little description is shown down here in this help screen. And that's the same for all, all screens in this program and a lot of our programs. Most all screens has this little help box down here. If you click on something like number of RPMs or RPM increment, a definition is given down, given down here. Here's another little blurb talking about the plus features if you want to add some additional features to your program. So here we have the 428 Mustang provided by Performance Trends as one of the examples. But this is not yours. You have maybe um, it started out life at a, a 390 from, um, I don't know, maybe a 65 Galaxy. You know, it wasn't a 69 428. So it's a little different. It's going to be your engine. So how do you make something your engine? Well, you take a starting point, some example of ours, you click on File, and you save as, save the engine file as, and now you can give it a name, your name. And your name, like I said, could be uh, 65, 65 Galaxy 428, and maybe it's a police interceptor. PI for police interceptor. Click on OK, and now you can see all the specs are still like that 428, 69, 428, but we've given it a new name. Now we're going to go through, and we can make the changes and make it more like your, like your file or your engine that you're building. For example, heads. Here we have stock heads as the type, but in your 65 that you're building, you know you got some aftermarket heads. So we're going to pick an example. 
of heads that are provided with the program. Let's see what we got for if we got any, uh, we got small block forward heads and we have other forward heads. Let's see what we got here. We're going to use this category. Here we've got a bunch of examples. And what do you know? They do have the Edelbrock heads that you're going to use. You can see here, Performer RPM FE for the FE block, 390 to 428 Cobra Jet. And that's the ones that you were thinking about getting. So let's do that. Let's pull that out, that example. And here it just gives us a little burb describing, you know, how the cylinder head specs work and everything. Okay. And I'm just saying that everything here in blue is locked into these specs. If you want to change the chamber type from being a typical wedge, let's say a compact wedge, it's going to say, you know, it's no longer representing this Edelbrock FE head anymore. And we're not going to let you call it that because you've made a change from what this example really is. I just showed you that for information. Do you want to change it anyway, which the program will let you do? We're going to say no. I want to keep it the stock Edelbrock, that part number, the 60079 FE Ford head. I could change the compression ratio because that is not part of the head. That's part of the, you know, could be part of the piston, the dish, or dome of the piston and such. So anyway, we've made that change. Got another info message. And now, let's say this is getting closer to representing my 65 Galaxy that I'm building. I'm going to click on File, and I'm going to save this change I've just made to that file. So now I've got the heads. You can see here in the summary, everything's like the 69, except I've got these FE heads from Edelbrock. And I can go in here and change the comments. Hold on. There, change the comments, and we could save that again. And now let's get into what we are all interested in. What kind of power are we making out of this thing? Calculate power, you can either click on this, Calc Horsepower, or Calculate Performance here. It's giving us a little note that these uh, valves look pretty big for the size port we got, but that's what uh, those heads are, so we're going to continue with calculations anyway. Those little checks are very useful. For example, if you're putting in some huge heads on, uh, let's say, a very small bore, it would be a good warning for you. Another, because we're in beginner level, it's giving you more information tips. What it's saying here is that you can click on most any output and get a little definition of what that output is. Here it says, for an example, if you clicked on the 331, currently displayed in the last column, oh, up here, if you clicked on that, you get a little def description of what's going on. For example, let's say you don't know what intake vacuum is. Click on intake vacuum, and it says that's what intake vacuum is. A little definition. You say you don't know if something down here. Let's say lobe separation. You move your cursor down there, and it gives a little blurb of that. So here we have the power output. If we go through here, it looks like uh, 436 foot-pounds of torque at 3600 is the highest, and about 372 horsepower at 5200 is the highest. If you want, you can make a little graph of this. And there you got a graph. Let's back out of here out of the graph, go back out to the main screen, and now here comes a part that everybody's interested in. What happens if we make a change? And you can see there's lots of little pop-ups here trying to give you explanations to try and help you out when you first get the program. As you try these, and we're not going to try them right now, I'm just going to show you, you can click on this and say, don't show this again. And I don't want this brief introduction here. But those little pop-ups are very useful when you're beginning. I just don't have time to show all that right now. But let's go through and make a change. We're running a 10 to 1 compression ratio now. Let's change that to 12. OK. Another little pop-up. 
going to calculate horsepower again. And you can just look through here and you can see that, yeah, we're up on torque and horsepower. But if you really don't remember what you did last time, you click on graph and ask, here's the current results, current torque and horsepower shown over here. You go click on last, which means include the last results also. And here's the last results. These are the immediately preceded results from that 10 to 1 compression ratio. And what you can do is you can click on a point on that line. And here you can see the difference at 3,600 RPM, shown down here, also shown here, for this cursor line I put on here, you can see that the current torque is 458 foot-pounds at 12 to 1. This is with the 12 to 1, the new compression ratio. Here it is at 436 with the old 10 to 1. We gained about 22 foot-pounds at 3,600 RPM. You go up here, click on these buttons and move the cursor. Another little tip message. And you can see how the cursor is moving. See it's over here now at 4,400. And each time you move the cursor, the data numbers at this line for torque and horsepower are being displayed over here. So you can see exactly what's going on. Or you can just click on it. Click on a breakpoint. And the cursor's over here, and now you see these numbers. You could click on print to print this in either color or black and white. You can change under format. Let's say you want to change, maybe you want to do uh, graphs of valve lift instead. And here you can see that these numbers are exactly the same. These two low profiles are exactly the same because we didn't change the cam profiles. We just changed the compression ratio. So these, there's actually two sets of data here and you can see the numbers are exactly the same because the two cam profiles are exactly the same between these two runs other things you can change is the back color maybe you want to go to a black back color maybe that's what looks better to you another thing you can do is you can zoom in i'm dragging a little box here i put the cursor somewhere away from the graph line i hold the left mouse button down while i drag the mouse to the lower right and now I zoom in on what's going on I can go click here go back to full view something that's kind of interesting to look at is the overlap area what's happening down here at overlap and here you got a picture zoomed in on the overlap area back out of this screen and this is working much slower than it will for you because we're recording things while we're doing this and um, what else we got here that might be interesting the results up here are things that change versus RPM, things like friction horsepower, something you may not even think about in an engine, but friction uses up a lot of power that should be available at the crank, but there's a lot of internal friction. Um, piston Gs, how many Gs a piston's going through at, when it stops at TDC? And down here are special calculations, things other than things that change with RPM. Things that are constant, like the cubic inch displacement is constant. That doesn't change as RPM. Compression ratio doesn't change. Here's a very interesting thing. Estimate of idle vacuum. This thing with this very mild cam should have about 25 inches of vacuum, very high amounts of vacuum because the overlap is so low for one reason and other things like high compression. Theoretical cranking compression very high also because high compression with a fairly mild cam. Back out to the main screen. Maybe you want to change something in the cam timing. Let's say we want to change the duration because this is such a mild cam. Let's just increase the duration here from 193 to 200. And over here on the exhaust, we're going to change it from 206 to 220. See what this does for us. Another pop-up. These are very good to read. Those pop-ups are very good to read when you're beginning. We're trying to point out the important things for you. Calculate performance again. Let's see what happened. Went to a bigger cam. I'm going to go down and look at idle vacuum here down. And now the idle vacuum dropped from 25 down to 22.9. Still very high, but not as high as it was because we've got a wilder cam in it. And what happened here? Graph. 
Here you can see the change in the, the cam specs or the valve lift curves. You can see the new one, the blue and the green, are bigger than the light blue and the red. Go down here and zoom in. You can see that here's the old overlap area from here to here. Here's a new from the blue to the green, much more overlap area. Or if we go click up here and change it back to torque and horsepower curves, you can see what happened here. With the new bigger cam, we gained a little horsepower up top. The green is higher than red. But we lost torque down here at low RPMs. And it looks like they broke even, about the same, right around 40. Let's click find a line here. There. At 4,400 RPM, there's almost no change. So that is how you use some of the basic features in the engine analyzer.